Another day greets us in true African splendor. What a wonderful morning. And as I say that, there she comes. Morning, sunshine. Good morning to everyone out there. Welcome to Juma Game Reserve and welcome to Wild Earth this morning. Watch this balloon climb into the sky. And so begins our day. Welcome again. My name is Mark. Brian is on camera with me this morning. And we have Africa at our feet. The most impressive little mist-filled valley that we're going to descend into to find some amazing creatures, I suppose. I hope. We drove out this morning and it was um, quite incredible because there was a pair of fish eagles sitting in a dead marula tree just not far from here and they were calling and quite far from any of the dams. I think I know which dam they come from and I think maybe we'll go back over there. Maybe they were sleeping here and they, now that it's daylight they're heading back to the dam. It's interesting to, make, to note that. But it was just a beautiful thing that they were calling and of course a minute before we went live they flew away and then as we went live it was the sound of the duet of the black collared barbet that we've been looking for for a few days now. Not that they're rare or anything, just they are pretty birds. They have the wrong name because they, 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 most of their color is really red. And there was a pair calling somewhere here. But they haven't called again, so maybe they've gone about their day. We're going to continue. Alex is in final control. Scotty's back and so is Nikki. And, well, I think, if I'm not mistaken, but Brent is also in final control this morning. So it's, we've got a full crew heavy, ready, rather, to, to see what we can bring you. Besides this beautiful sunrise. And the kudu, look at them, coming out of the bush in front of us. We don't have to go anywhere yet. They've been watching us, watching the sunrise. venturing out of the woodwork.
the air is barely moving so the sounds are crisp and clear from every direction that it's it's noisy to breathe Good morning stations, Mark Wild Earth Mobile. Appears to be two cows and their calves, these kudu. These are about the largest antelope we're going to have here at Juma, unless a stray eland comes wandering through. I suppose the tallest, I think. Obviously, wildebeest are a little heavier. I think let's see what the day brings. I see a fifth one. We're going to go past shortly. Typical family group of kudu, some cows and calves, young males, perhaps. Hello, madam. You've got a X chromosome on your back. Oh. You see that flash of white? Almost alarming. Calmed it down. Mm. 
we also notice they're not the stripes are not symmetrical, it's like zebra. Any animal really. The left is not the same as the right, although one might think so. Even us. <clears throat> Morning, let's go. Back with you. Possibly the older of the cows being at the back, lagging behind. The mist's getting a little bit thicker. We're also going a little bit lower. Be interesting to see some spider webs in this mist. Morning, madam. really peaceful. It's almost like I don't want to talk because I don't want to spoil it. Look here, on my right, there's a golden orb. Something must have flown through her web during the night. <coughs> but with this mist, spider silk just stands out incredibly well. She's very skinny. She's not likely to lay eggs. Been a bad season for spiders. So you just kick a male off? No, I think those are all the little dewdrops. Yeah. Well, she didn't. She gets close to them and they drop in defence. Little dewdrop spiders that are stealing. That's a, a garbage line that she's on now. All her prey remains. 
and as you can see, there's not very much there. There's a young, there's a male next to her. Maybe she's inviting him. That's why she's getting rid of the other ones. No, that's not. I thought I saw a male. She's going to repair. I've noticed bats this season for the first time, actually. Shall we continue? We'll find more some more pretty spider webs, different types of spiders. Some bat species have started taking golden orbs. Now, I haven't noticed it before. It's not that they haven't been doing it before. I haven't noticed it before, really. And generally, one finds the bats feeding places are not necessarily their roosting places. And every now and then, one. There's an interesting Franklin, but they're so shy. Here's another one that was hiding. She's going to follow hard to get this on camera because the grasses are so long but there's a good enough quick view and that's not a very common Franklin we don't get to see it very often we hear them in the evenings thanks Brian well done caught it running through the grass so, I happen to find several bat feeding places where they feed regularly. One place in particular is in my kitchen. So I wake up every morning and I find the remains of whatever the bats have been catching at night. And I've lived in many places where I've had that opportunity. And for the first time I've noticed golden orb legs in the bat remains. Something going on on the radio, I need to find out, but a little bit far from whoever's calling. The legs come in. Cruise camp. Sharon, in Memphis, Tennessee, there's a little raptor sitting in a tree for Sharon in Tennessee. Oh, that's a good one to get to. One diagnostic feature. But it's looking down at us. It looks away. Sorry. Sharon, I'll get back to you shortly. We don't get to see small raptors, what we call the accipiters. And this is one of them. They have a very distinctive flight pattern. So you often see them flying and landing in a tree. But most often during the day, they land under the crown and they sort of swoop up to a perch. It's known as a lizard buzzard. And if it wasn't looking down for looking for lizards, we'd see a black stripe on its throat. A little vertical stripe down its throat. There we go. Oh, almost.
very small. It's probably only about, what would that be, 10 inches, 25 centimeters. So it gets confusing because it's known as a lizard buzzard, but buzzards in other parts of the world are vultures. Yeah, I suppose we can be moving on. It's looking nice, the sun coming through the mist. Sharon was referring to a photograph that, oh, sorry, Brian, that I actually saw early this morning in my insomniatic state. Hyena and jackal hanging out. It was interesting. Um, I've seen hyena, or rather jackal and lion hanging out. I don't think it's, I didn't get to see much. I think there were two photographs of, of hyena. I think it was one hyena and two jackal that were in close proximity. And yes, I guess you could say hanging out because they were probably uh, on the edge of a carcass somewhere, probably both waiting to get to feed on something or maybe the hyena had something and the jackal were hanging around because jackal are so fast and they are so nifty, they are so crafty too. I've seen jackal dash in on a buffalo carcass amongst the lion and grab things because the lion, they, lion on a carcass gets so intent on protecting their little piece of meat that they, they fight like cats. And As soon as the other carnivore, I guess we could call it, it's not really scavengers, and there are scavengers, but they also are all, all of them are hunters. Jackal are hunters, hyena are hunters. But when there's something to go for, they, they are likely to wait for a moment. And well, the jackal tend to be opportunistic and faster than the, 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 the larger predators. And sometimes they take chances. It would be interesting to see a, maybe a piece of video if there was any interspecies uh, 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 contact, communication, if there was any interaction. That would be interesting to know because there, there might be a lot of interspecific communication or interaction in artificial circumstances. But in the natural environment, animals tend to stay to themselves. Very seldom do you see any meaningful interaction. I think they would be anomalies. Not that they don't happen. Sometimes they happen for the joy that they are. Um, what comes to mind is a a dog that swims out there, I think in Scotland or one of the small islands in the British Isles, somewhere out there there's a dolphin that comes into a harbour and a dog that goes out and swims out to meet it and the two of them play in the water. Um, we've had 
warthog and baboons interacting on camera. Back here on the open area. Hooks. We've had, I've seen monkeys and bushbuck interacting. It's nice to capture, capture those moments. It's hard to tell from photographs what was going on and, and what the circumstances were with hyena and jackal together. <coughs> Sorry. I was listening to it, but I wasn't. I was trying to con concentrating on what I was saying, I suppose. <coughs> no, what were they saying on the radio? I don't know. Right. Time for another view. Texas. Island Crested Rollers having an argument. Matt's asking if the bats here are in Africa, South Africa perhaps. And they're suffering from this fungal infection that's affecting bats in the US. I read about this a little while ago, Matt. Very, it was very interesting. Um, if I remember correctly, it's it's very hard to eradicate. Um, I don't know, Matt. I haven't heard of any problems in the bat population here yet. What's that? I'm making a funny noise. Speaking stronger. I think I'll have to look that up, Matt. It'll be interesting to see how widespread that fungus, that infected white nose fungus is. I'll read you now. Morning, Lex. I'll read you now. If anyone copies me, it uh, can relay. I can't uh, get through the lift. mornings except it's Tuesday. And misty Monday, no, misty morning sidewalk.
Carolyn in Chicago, do I think predators get adrenaline rushes? Now, there's a pretty good question, man. Because they have to, they must do. I, I, I guess you're asking whether it's during the month or if it's just the general thing. Generally, yes. The answer is yes. Um, most certainly, when they're fighting or when there's, but I think, I think the adrenaline starts pumping in a predator the moment it goes into stalk mode. I've, I've been so close to cats, uh, not necessarily the big cats, especially close, uh, or, or rather, speaking specifically of domestic cats. At that moment, when see how fast that heart starts beating, pumping blood, and oxygen to the muscles. Um, it, it, it must be uh, an incredible adrenaline rush for a predator the moment that it, it takes that takes off and starts the hunt. And it's sometimes that adrenaline that, whether it's fighting or it's hunting, that if anything happens, there's no the, the brain doesn't register pain or feeling or. Life speeds up very quickly. I suppose it can't happen without adrenaline. Oh wow! Saddle pools in the back. The Gary Dam. Anybody come through with that spur file shit? That oh, I he said it. Franklin. I'm just gonna have a look from here. Well, I'm gonna come back here. But we have to go back to where we stopped for sunrise because I have to intercept something there. Got a date. with the cat. The birding morning this morning. Thank you, Alex. Let's move along here. A reminder, or just a mention for folks out there. At the moment, the Wild Earth website is having problems. So, if you're trying to access our website, www.wildearth.tv Website's having problems, but the stream, there's nothing wrong with the stream. We're still streaming. Everything's fine on that front. There is only the one website, and the problem is being attended as I speak. Pardon? The mist is moving in. I know. It's, 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 
it's increasing because now the top of the ridge is in mist. It's beautiful. Absolutely. Tracks in the road from last night, there's a hyena going the opposite direction. But looks like mongoose, a large mongoose known as the white tailed mongoose. But we hope we will find here on this open area one of these evenings when we're coming back from our drive. There's a different feel about things today. It's kind of energizing driving through this mist, and this mist is getting thicker and thicker. Um, it's, it's beautiful, really. Mystifying. That's corny. No, that was corny. <laughs> Did some come out in the mist today? It doesn't come out yet. Uh, it's a mystery. <laughs> that was corny too. How many corny cracks can we make with mist? Come on, folks. How many mystifying things can we say <laughs> Alex started the lens is misted up a bit oh uh, there wasn't a joke it really I'll, I'll it really when we see something it really has misted up yeah no, just because it's 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 a misty morning on a misty morning sidewalk Monday morning, coming down. Isn't that the song? What song was that and who wrote it? Who sang it? Not who wrote it. Have you got a... Uh, you've got something? Yeah, I've got it. That blue one went... No, 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 I've got such a great That blue one will just wipe the mist around the lane. Nice for dust. Hyena, hyena. Hyena. Good morning. No news on my Franklin slash spur foul. That means I haven't got any burgers watching. But I have to turn some people into them. Cocky Franklin. Really?
Sarah, morning Sarah. Do we have any Jackson's chameleons here? No, I think they come from Jamaica. No, no I'm thinking of another one. The only chameleon we get here is the flat necked chameleon in this part of the world. There are a number of dwarf chameleons that you find all the way down the coast in different regions of the mountains. There are many different species of, of dwarf chameleons further south. But in this part of the world only the flap neck chameleon. Further north from here you get another small chameleon but that's the pygmy chameleon. And then in Tanzania, well that's in Tanzania and Kenya. But there are also isolated populations of endemic species of chameleons that are unique to little areas. Um, but yes, only one type of chameleon for us. Who is sitting on a pole? There's another little raptor. That's a special bird. A little bit bigger than the lizard buzzard we saw earlier. Such cool air means that flying isn't an option at the moment. So better to hunt from a perch. I want to get to the front of this child. Hello. Now that you've seen me, you're probably going to fly away and Brian's going to need to follow you. One of the only small raptors that actually hovers. And there it goes into the mist. Morning. How are you? Very good in you. Right. I've only just noticed it now. Yeah, so it's coming. I, I was watching, I had my eye on the sky, there's a black shouldered kite sitting here. Oh, okay. It's gone now. Yeah. Yeah, um, it came all the way from the bottom end of Zoe's road. It's a little bit, there's some porcupine tracks on top of it now. So then he's probably already gone north to Sandy Patch. Yeah. So maybe around towards Sydney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which way are you going to go? Up Sandy Patch? Uh, yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll go. I'll take, is it that that road that connects from, I'll drive to the gate. Okay, then I'll take this one next yeah. time. Okay. Can you hear me? The radios are Yeah, that, soft, that's dismissed. Eh? No, it's just absorbing so much of the signal probably. Okay, well, see you. I was looking up because of the kite. Black shouldered kite. Beautiful bird to see. Incredible hunters. So he must have walked straight through here. The legs might pick him up on the way. This is one of the boys, I think. Young male leopard's tracks. And there was nothing at the junction. Lex written a book about leopards. Lex is in is here at the moment in front of us. 
his guests didn't want to come out. They've been out for the, the last few days, staying at Gallagher Camp. And, well, I guess they wanted to lie in today. So I missed his tracks. I don't want it. Well done to Joan in Arizona for sending in the black shouldered kite answer. I'll get back to you. I don't want to drive on the road until we establish where these tracks go. Do you mind being on camera? Not at all. One of the elephant tracks on the way to the dam. I think. fresh it hasn't come through here it must have gone up towards the gate but I've got a funny feeling since he's been moving northwest in a particular line that's aiming towards the dam I'm pretty sure that at some point he's going to cut through that block before he gets to the gate somewhere one of those elephant tracks that one or two of them you can follow. One or two of them they're wide enough to drive to drive down.
Yeah, kitty, kitty, kitty. Okay, copy, thanks. Thanks anyway. Good luck. He's still further west of us, but he's going to come out there. So it's not going to be easy to see distance with the mist. I only hope that he starts coming back east from where he gets to now, otherwise he's... <laughs> not going to be able to see him at all. Diane, New York, crested spur fowl. No, it was this morning. Not the crested. Have to pull out the book and debate. Can't even see the dam. Imagine wondering how those fish eagles, I suppose from up. is where these elephant paths come out. They cross Vuitella Access Road and several of them converge. A lot of elephant tracks on them too. Now he walked this way. Shelley's Franklin, now that sounds more like it. Diane.
some way here, but he didn't come here. He was coming this way. barely more than 50 yards in this mist. So I have both roads that I'm on here, well this one which is our access road and then this big main road just nearby. But normally you can see a long way down these roads, you can't see more than 50 yards. Yeah kitty, I know you're there somewhere. Close. down the road. Morning Genevieve. Genevieve is asking if the, if the mist has any impact on animal senses and scent markings as well. Whether or if, if the mist uh, lessens the impact of the scent marking, not necessarily. Um, I think. That would maybe help sound travel better. More moisture, no? Or will it absorb more sound? I don't, know. I don't really know, Genevieve. I can't. I'm really, given me a question, something to think about. Actually, what effect the mist has on animal senses? Rain. Although rain can wash things away, scent will still remain for certain, in certain circumstances. Um, I think animals have such an acute sense of smell that even after rain there is a fair amount of residue that's still left for animals to smell. In terms of their senses, hearing things, smelling things, yes, maybe scent are not as strong, I guess. Another elephant path. Did he walk this one? No.
another elephant path and he didn't walk that one. down there but then he turned around and came back in the same way. It's hard to get landmarks. That big marula there we need to keep. that's the one we need to look at. But that was the one we looked we came past that one. They went down there, then he turned around, came back. So his Zigzagging, maybe.
harvested termites have been very busy. Now this cat has walked down here. He, there's a little gully off to our left. And he walked out of there while we were on Puyatella Access Road. While I was looking for tracks there, he came around, oops, he came around this gully. And he's walked down on top of my tracks. So he's probably not that there now. That's Tribulus terrestris, the Tribulus seed. And yes, those are one type of seed that hurts a little bit when you walk on them. He must have almost touched the gate and then came down this way. Here are our tracks from earlier, his tracks on top of my tracks. Finally the lift, the lift, the mist seems to be lifting. Copy that, sorry. I don't know where this cat should have gone. There's a termite mound over there, but... Okay, right here, at the buildings of the, lo of the gate. Activity here at the gate. I would imagine that he. Oh, we never know what these guys can be up to. But let me do another little turn up here.
close as I am to the gate and to um, staff housing, elephant and hyena, a lot of tracks here. What we're doing is we're trying to follow up on a male leopard, young male leopard, that was here moments ago. And I can't find where he's gone because he's been walking in two different directions. The last track that I can see at the same place as tracks coming up in the opposite direction. I've got two sets of tracks going one way and one not copying nearly very well. I've copying only about one out of five, didn't get much of that. Oh, Blair, where's the magnetic monkey? Uh, he'll be coming along shortly. Stayed behind when I came back from leave last time. Stayed looking at some, to play with some friends. There was a magnetic Ellie. Couldn't resist playing with the magnetic Ellie called Elimo. Oh look, human footprints. Oh wait, this must be mine. Okay, well, this is the last time going through this little patch of and then I am done with this patch. Probably lying in the grass somewhere close by. the tracks going that way and only one set coming up my conclusion is that he must have gone back that way he came in from the road going north at some point turned south and then went back north again and it's all around this little gully and this lovely big tree and I'm not sure what I'm not even sure what this tree is it could be a for a mahogany. It could be a nyala berry. Dense enough. Certainly the only one here on Juma. There isn't another one like it. But he's not in it. He's not here. If you're interested in Sending questions, questions at wildearth.tv is the email. Send a tweet to hashtag Safari Live. The lift is finally lifting. It's almost instant. It's amazing how fast that it does that. And lifting and moving towards the mountain. North and northwest. So far, I'm not seeing it. This cat has come out of this bush, so I don't know where he is. This area of bush that I've been looking, driving in circles around.
we move on because I if I give up too easily. I'm sure it was the Shelleys. See the Koki, the Koki Franklin is a very small Franklin and it could have been the females that we saw. I didn't see a male but I'm thinking that it might have been the Shelleys. Well. Right, we'll have to see if there's anybody got a screenshot. Any consensus? Oh, looky, looky! Pussy cat, pussy cat. Where did you go? I wish we were here earlier. If only I. Elephants, cats and elephants that have come into this part of Gari. Lots of cats running around all over, up and down, up and down. They were sleeping here, they were they were on top of the elephant track. Now they're gone. see if I can see where they went. This is also going to be confusing. Sleeping
came in, they slept here on the road, got up and left again. Pardon? Yeah, peace. Oh. Yes, thanks for reminding me. The mist gone. It is starting to get warm again. I do primitive. Oh. Okay. Thanks for being patient with me. But We'll get there eventually. I hope. Okay. Cut off of Gary Cut now. I rather get it a shortcut. And came out here. Just didn't walk far enough. But they're in Palace up ahead. That's not fair. That's not playing fair. When you're tracking line and you think they're close and then you find a herd of impala, so, uh, something wrong with this picture. Morning children. Seen any cats this morning? Like the ones that just went down Aubrey's Road. 
perhaps Yeah, kitty kitty, if I can't catch a leopard, I'll catch a cat. Morning in the mist, the tracks weren't on where Tele Access Road. We might have missed them by minutes. Might have missed them on where Tele Access Road, but. If they haven't crossed, then they're between there and here. Up around any one of these bends. That's why we go around the bend so quickly. Because the thrill of the track. Evil. Douglas in California. Morning Douglas. The cats have left the road. Now we're gonna go back and find where they did so. Before, before I do that. What do we look for when we go for walks? Douglas, I'm not sure whether you mean bush walks or whether you mean that when we go off of the vehicle now when we're tracking animals. Uh, uh, when we get off the vehicle, looking for their tracks. When we get to a junction mostly, like now for example, they've been walking on the road up until a few yards back and suddenly they've all left the road and so I need to find, I need to go back to see where they left the road. Whether they left the road going off to the right or whether they left the road going off to the left. My guess is they might have gone off to the right because it's the general direction that these cats have been moving in. But we are not too far from where Tele Access Road. And if they've cut through somewhere, we've probably driven past them. But they might have also laid down somewhere. There are no longer any tracks on the road. They haven't come back to the road. So they are off in the bush somewhere. What we look for is then pathways that they might have taken, where they might be. Douglas is also asking, what do we do about encounters with animals, generally speaking, most of the time animals are afraid of us as humans, so uh, most of the time they, they get up and run away or they, they move off around the block. It's very 
very difficult to say what one does in different circumstances because your reaction has to match the circumstance and most of the time hopefully when we are out and we are on foot maybe with a bit of luck we're aware enough of our surroundings having done this often enough that we achieve our goal we find where we, we either where the cat the cats are and there's another leopard cat coming out there but it's not very good And hopefully we can backtrack and extract ourselves from it, maybe what could become a sticky situation. If you say tracking elephant or you're on foot and you, you see elephant, hopefully you see them before they see you. And with a little bit of luck, maybe you can increase your distance. There's never any need, once you, once you see an animal on foot, there's never really any need to get closer because as soon as you start getting trying to get closer you are then starting to impact on that animal's secure or, or, or comfort zone safety zone Every now and then something does happen. Every now and then you get charged by an animal and you got to stand your ground most of the time. There's no running away from things because one can never run fast enough. And it will entice animals to chase. They're only faster than one thing out here. Another human. No, tortoises. Tortoises. <laughs> Every other animal will catch us. Yeah. There's a, also, there's the other saying that, that goes, if you're out on, on foot, you only have to run faster than the next person. Or faster than the slowest person. Wildebeest, I hate to give you this news, but there's a pride of lion that are probably heading this way at the moment. Come back to where we picked up the leopard tracks. that is establishing his territory from here all the way up to the dam any little open patch of ground he can get he'll claim as his <laughs> Linda, morning, Texas, I'm surprised you remember. They're talking about snakeskin. I'm sure it was maybe Brent found this one. Um, piece that was here in, in the vehicle. If Brent didn't find it, that means that we've got quite a large cobra living in the vehicle at the moment. Um, Linda in Texas is asking if I still have that very big mumba skin. I do. Once upon a time, about four years ago, I found a very very large black mamba skin down the twin dams in the termite mound and I held it up where the head was I held it up as high as I could and the end of the skin touched the ground and there was still a good few feet missing from the end of the from the end of it because it wasn't even the tail section that was missing it was actually part of the body that was missing
hole in it. Any station on Western Gari? Now the trick is to backtrack to where the last tracks are that I saw without driving over any of them. Yeah, that, that snake skin is at home, Linda. Tumbavati. Mansambula. I think we can safely say that they are probably asleep somewhere unless they've cut south. Southeast. still elephants to look for this morning too because there are a lot of fresh elephant tracks coming in from Biffleshook as much as there are I suppose in a way elephants going north there's still elephants coming south so it's not really part of the seasonal movement maybe some of it is but it's just natural elephant movements Somewhere here is where I think they must have
must have been the last tracks, maybe just around this bend. Yep. Okay. So, I wish there was something I could show you, but I'm just park in the shade for Brian. And just quickly have a look, because it's only a few yards back.
very difficult to establish. And I'm, ha I'm, I'm guessing just immediately behind the vehicle. It's very, the grasses on either side are pretty massive. And there are very, very few little bare patches of soil. Unfortunately, there's no, there are no alarm calls. These cats are probably flat somewhere. And that could be anywhere from 50 yards into 200. I'm thinking that they crossed heading a bit more to the south. I'm, I'm guessing southeast, southwest, sorry. East. I've turned around. We are heading north. So they came in here and I'm thinking that they might have left the road to the south. There are a few sort of flat imprints there that could be anything. Um, I guess we can try Gallagher shortcut again. Find the southern one? I heard them. Yeah. Well done. Joanne in Arizona, is it? Thanks, man. I wonder if the intention was to go south here and when they came this way they saw there were elephants and so they went around the elephants. I wonder if that's what it was. That, uh, judging by the tracks that are here, could be what it is. Chasing southern white ground strike. I wonder, these are the same strikes that you were filming, maybe, coming over from Aubrey's Road. Pardon? Potentially. being chased by drongos and other shrikes. I think it must have caught something that they wanted all over. That's right. 
Uh, never mind. Uh, the, the little flock and the little family of the other another shrike that gets confusing with the white crown. This is the white helmet shrike. Or the great crowned white helmet. Or, uh, what's a helmet shrike? White crowned helmet shrike. White. This used to be known as the white helmet shrike. Look at the cats coming out of the bird. They're asleep somewhere in the bush. Between here and where I think we're just going to have to leave tracking now because we've spent a lot of time at it without any results. Those cats must be there somewhere. And take another hour of doing a big walking circle around that bush, in the bush. And I can't leave you too long. Done Aubrey's road, we would have found it. So, Mark Null Cat 2 we'll count this morning. Cat's meaning me too. line is normally a very easy thing to track because they move together and there are always more than one spot. They've always got a number of different tracks. They don't necessarily walk right behind each other. So there is always going to be one straying off a path or leaving a track. But if there aren't any, if I can't find it, it's... Oh, hello. One task, two tasks. One of the alleys. Morning. I knew you guys were about because you tracked it everywhere. And I'm pretty sure it's the cause of you that, that, that they went off. Morning elephant sir. That's quite a branch you've got there. It's his tongue. <laughs> Wraps around the branch. You're going to chew the bark off of it. Chew the leaves. This piece of buffalo thorn that he's got. Is that it? I think we've seen him before. He's broken a couple of those big buffalo thorns. She. She. How silly of me. Look at that forehead. She.
bij de elephant. that goes down past Gallagher Camp. Maybe they're heading to that little waterfall. Still too much. Still too distant. Hmm. believe it, two seconds with an elephant. Unless you can find some down this way. Looks like a buffalo. Not an elephant. Morning, Squire. he has on the side of his face. No, he's self-conscious about it. Okay. See you shortly, Mr. Buffalo. <laughs> Right.
a strange morning, starting with that mist and now the sun is beating down, turning everything into an oven. And the elephants are hiding. It's too thick to get in there after to, to look for them or look at them. They'll be at the dam later. The way that she was walking was coming down, more or less down to this drainage line. And this just goes straight into Gary Dam. About the mist was it kept them pretty quiet. But now they're coming up. Well, they're getting warm, and I suppose if there are some elephants about, this goes past Gary Dam, and then we'll get back to where, more or less, where that elephant was. Just in case there is an alley on the way to the water. No doubt, buffalo.
Got a lot of space in our feet. Okay, copy it. Have you got Tulani with you? Alex, come in. Do you know if Tulani managed to go out this morning? Copy. I don't know if any of the guys are still in FC, but maybe if he's in camp, someone can take him with Jigger down to Chelapan, get what he wants. One buffalo so far. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of others coming down soon. It's nice to see the saddleable stalks are still here from earlier. Maybe we can stop and watch them for a little while and get a little bit further onto the dam wall. If I'm not mistaken, there were hippo here this morning in the mist. They have left. Ah, there's a nose, the hippo nose just poked its head up and took a breath. Beautiful reflection.
Let's go see if we can catch up with elephants. Hello, Nikki, in South Africa. <laughs> How do you tell the difference between male and female? If we could get close enough, Nikki, we'd see that the female has a yellow eye. They don't migrate, no, they are resident all year round. So let me see with my binoculars, let me get a closer look to see who's who in the zoo. That looks like the male on the right that's preening now, and the female on the left. yellow eye. It's not easy to see from this distance. But of course the other thing is that he has, apart from the yellow uh, saddle over his bill, he has a, a yellow gula patch, throat patch. And they're mostly monogamous, entirely monogamous. Okay, let's try and find those ellies again. Animals having been going in circles this morning. Path for the course, beautiful day. Any direction we choose is just as good as any other, so it doesn't really matter where, which way we go. Excuse me, Starling. Darling. A threatened species the saddle will stalk. There are not very many pairs left in the wild. Wetland loss. Habitat loss. Deforestation taking away the large trees they need to nest in. Maybe not so much that as much as it is pressures of of, of burgeoning human population. Animal stalks on the nest are extremely sensitive. They don't like disturbance at all. And I guess it must be hard for them to nest. Around the edges of the reserve, so the main population of, this, of these birds is probably deep within the confines of Kruger, where they are not hassled too much by, by humans. They're large, they fly slowly. They sh they're slow to take off, as are most large birds. And I guess they have their predators too.
Just a little glimpse of it. Here we go. His tail swishing. They'll be spending their time amongst the, the tree canopy during the day. And then they'll probably be back out there on the open this evening when it starts cooling down, when they need to have a better safety zone around them. More ground between them and their predators out in the open when they can see things coming. Well, here things coming from further away. Maybe we need to go back to that little water hole in front of Gallagher Camp, where the buffalo was. Chris in Adelaide. Gonna to tomorrow, I guess it's night time for you now, Chris, or evening. Chris is guiding tomorrow at an animal park in Australia. With black and white rhino. Now there's been talk of moving the main rhino breeding project to Australia because the climate is so similar. There's no chance of poaching there. Important question, Chris, but a very difficult question to answer. Chris is asking, what is the South African government doing to stop rhino poaching? Well, the immediate answer, Chris, is not enough. The second answer is very little, or not enough. Mind the whole. Deep hole. Chris, I think if you look at the figures at the moment, we're losing one rhino in Africa every six to seven hours. Every, that's the rate. That is the, the that is the speed at which they are being hunted in South Africa at the moment. So for every two drives we do, one rhino gets poached. Now, if it was for every month we were doing drives that a rhino got poached, or if it was for every year a rhino, it would still be too many, because this, it, shouldn't, it, it, it shouldn't be happening at all. There, there should be no rhino being shot anyway. When is the, the wake-up call going to happen? Well, we all know the answer to that, because it's um, I, I, just human nature to wake up only when it's too late. I like to do with two little ones. Could they be, could they be, could they be twins? I don't think so. One's a little bit bigger than the other. It's another mama's baby. Morning, children. The buffalo we saw earlier hasn't really moved much because Sometimes buffalo don't really do much. Aren't you just a pretty little thing? There's another mum at the back, poking her head up. Mrs. Shabalala. 
and family. First, there, there, there is a lot being done. I, I can't, I can't deny that. I can't uh, ignore that fact that the government is doing something. I think there's a new aeroplane that has just been donated to. Oh, well, that's not government, but government is rolling out military might, I suppose. Maybe not as much as it should, but the military is trying to help them. Parts of Kruger. To be honest, I don't know to what extent the government is making an effort. But as I say, if we're losing one rhino every six to seven hours, then surely the government is hardly doing anything. Because we should be we should be dropping the numbers of rhino that are being posted. Not allowing it to escalate. At the moment it's escalating exponentially. Uh, it was a while ago already I think well over a year ago that we hit negative growth in rhino population where the population now where it now stands uh, poaching is exceeding the number of births now I'm sure that in your presentations and when you're talking to people about the rhino you have out there you'd like to give them answers but I think we need to we need to get people to put pressure on governments there the Ellie's just up ahead of us finally caught up with them One, two three four five family group Hello ladies. Let's see if I can find a nice place where we can watch them. Very dense. It's almost impossible to get in here. But if they're moving, that's quite a large herd actually. Maybe here, not really, hey. a little bit of a rump here and a little bit of a trunk there. But maybe if we just sit for a bit, they will move into view. There's a lot of round leaf teak in front of us that they are likely to come and feed on, or mount to come and feed on. That little one's feeding on some teak.
The little one's going to show its face any minute in that gap. That was quick. Little one running behind. Interesting. Probably maybe called along by a matriarch or a another elephant. Now she's also moving along. She's a big girl. Something interesting happening behind that termite mound, that's for sure. Fortunately, Gary Dam is close by and I have a feeling that they'll be heading that way later. We might see them for our afternoon drive. They are now heading quite deep into what is actually quite a large block of bush fells between Juma and Biffles of Cutline. There's a little gap here you can see. The last of them. Andrew, come in. Andrew, come in. How good are you? Radio is better. Um, Kahuma and Konzo heading down Aubrey's, but I, I'm not too sure where they went halfway down Aubrey's. Okay, copied. Radio. And as these ellies disappear off into the the green thickets. Um, I've just heard news now, just come in now, that uh, up on Cheetah Cut Line on Central Road, there's a female leopard up there. I'm guessing it might even be Karula, but it's just that time of the day we can't get that far east. 
So it's, we've been in the wrong place at the wrong time today. Sometimes it works for us and sometimes it doesn't. That's why we do it every day, so that hopefully every now and then we do manage to put time and place together and put it put put everything into perspective. Thank you for joining me, for those of you who are still with us. Thanks for being part of our drive this morning, for the input that you did. Hope I managed to answer whatever questions are that were sent. Thanks, Brian, on camera. Alex in final control with Mickey and Scott and Brent. Uh, we are back in camp. From all of us here at Wild Earth, my name is Mark, and I'll see you a little bit later this afternoon, 4 o'clock Central African time. Love you lots. Bye for now.